morning, everyone. How are we doing this morning? Good. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's get our Bibles out and open them up to the book of Matthew. Be in Matthew chapter 5, first book of the New Testament. And as you're turning there, I'd just like to thank this church for your hospitality toward us while we're here. And uh, we just really appreciate all that you guys have been doing, making us feel welcome and all of that stuff. And uh, we've just really been enjoying ourselves and coming. And so thank you very much for that. And I also, we're going to be looking in verse 6, and we're going to be talking about hunger and thirst. And hunger and thirst for what is, is what we're going to focus on. And so, really, as I, I always consider this, that it's hungering and thirsting, what we're hungering and thirsting after is righteousness. Amen. And so when I notice a Sunday school crowd, is some, is, there's an indication of a hunger and thirst for righteousness. That it, you know, faithful attenders of Sunday school, and then Wednesday night and Sunday night in these things, is, is an indication of wanting more for your spiritual life. And so that's hungering and thirsting to begin with on the Lord's day to be under as much teaching and preaching as possible. <clears throat> and so the question this morning would be, is, is, as I can tell somewhat, but what are we hungry for? Right? What are we hungering for today? What are we, what are we longing for? What are we striving after? And that's a good question to consider all the time in our lives. What are the things that are most important? What are we striving after? What are we going after in our life? The next question would be, is how can we be blessed people of God? If we read through Matthew 5 here, we see in the Beatitudes, we're blessed, and it talks about being blessed. So how can we be truly happy? And I mean happy as in uh, truly happy. And are we in that state today? We see in Matthew 5, it's a Sermon on the Mount is what we call that, and I love that. I can read that all the time because it's so practical, right? Like we, we can read that and learn how exactly to be blessed. How can we be that? And, and it's, it's eight ways to be blessed people. And Jesus here is going to lay those out so plain for us to read, right? And when he talks about blessed, he's talking about being happy to the the most sense of the word, not just happy as in, I have a Keurig coffee machine and I'm happy I can get an instant cup of coffee like that without having to do anything. I'm ha it makes me happy. But that's very minuscule on what happiness he's talking about here. Now, if you can consider like the, the Garden of Eden in the beginning, where everything's perfect, everything is, is the way it should be, and everyone is completely fulfilled in the Lord, that's what he's talking about when he's talking about happiness and satisfaction, like the first paradise. And we'll see that, that righteousness and holiness go hand in hand, right? Um, happiness and satisfaction are one thing, and that we must have a desire for personal righteousness. A desire to, be, to live a righteous life is an indication of our regeneration, like like. Brother Wayne was saying is, are we trusting in Christ today? Are we regenerated? Are we reborn? Do we have a new nature? And as an indication of that is, is the desire to, to have personal holiness and righteousness. And uh, the, the, the thing that's true with that is that you can't have uh, holiness and the blessedness. You can't have that and have sin at the same time. You cannot be truly happy. Jesus is saying in this text, you can't be truly happy and be living in sin. That's right. Holiness and blessedness cannot be separated. When you're talking about holiness and this blessedness, this truly happiness you're talking about, they can't be separated. Much like a palm tree can't grow in Wyoming. Right? It can't happen. Blessedness cannot exist apart from righteousness. A palm tree can't exist in dryness and wind. 
Happiness of a man must come through his righteousness. But to be truly happy, it comes through the righteousness of God. And what I mean by that is by us being right with God. And so our challenge here today is to be right with God. And that's where the happiness comes from. It's not going to be in the, in the new items that we desire or any of those things. Happiness of man must come through his righteousness as being right with God. Now let's look at this verse 6, Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do pray this morning that we could have our eyes enlightened to the truth of your word. God, just work through me as we uh, learn more about you. And God, help it to... Uh, Help us to grow and to ultimately be more like Christ, that we could leave changed and see you more clear. And we thank you that we have that uh, power of the Spirit to work in us to do so. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so having not attained full righteousness in this life, right? Our, we can't. It's, it's, we're imperfect people. We're in the flesh. Right? We can't obtain full, perfect righteousness. Only the Lord did that, right? And that's exactly why we need Him as our substitute. Because He did that in our place. Because we've already sinned. We've already come short of the glory of God. We need to have full righteousness of Jesus Christ to come, and we put our faith in that, and we stand on His righteousness. But what does that mean for us? And we have to get this, that our text says that the longing for that, the longing for righteousness itself, is going to make, our, make His people blessed. He's going to make us blessed as we long for that. Does that make sense? So we're going to see the striving after it, the, the substance of it, and the satisfaction of it, of it. So first, let's talk about the striving part, the hungering and the thirsting part. We need to have the mindset of Job here. When we talk, we get to get our minds right as, we, as we're going to listen to this. As Job 23, 12 says, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Now that's serious stuff there. That's, that's a man who loves God's words. Now are we on the same page as Job this morning? Do we have an eager, itching desire to hurry up and get here? Were we in our Bible this morning before we ever saw food? I've esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. As stated before, the, this is very practical teaching of Christ, and I believe that this verse 6 is kind of the pivot point here. It's the pinnacle. Now there's a very interesting uh, order to this. You see that in verse 3 it says, The poor in spirit and in the morning, and then the, they become meek. And then this, and then verse 6, you hunger and thirst after righteousness. And then after verse 6, you look at verse 7, it says, blessed are the merciful. Now you, because are hungering and thirsting after the righteousness, after you've become broken over your sin and mourned, and now you can be merciful in verse 8, pure in heart, and 9, peacemakers. See how it kind of goes in order there. There's, a, there's a, a way that you have to approach all of this. And I think this part here is the pinnacle. Now hunger, if we talk about hunger, it's a very powerful thing, isn't it? I mean, when you get hungry, it kind of controls your whole body, doesn't it? And so is thirst. And so it kind of uses these together. Now the desire to eat is a strong desire to the hungry man. If a man's hungry, he's going to do anything to get food. And I'm talking hungry, like real hunger. There's a, it's a very urgent need for the body. When people are hungry, they get sharp pains in their stomachs. They have, uh, it's painful, it hurts. So if you talk about real hunger, real pain, and I'm talking about hunger, not like a child who just ate dinner and comes up and says, Mom, I'm hungry. Has anyone ever experienced that in here? And you say, well, there's some carrots in the fridge. <laughs> I don't want those. <laughs> okay. Kid's not hungry. The kid's bored and wants something to eat because it's fun, right? Now, that's not the kind of hunger I'm talking about. I'm talking about real 
hunger here. And someone, someone's uh, whole being fighting for fulfilling a need of hunger. And I want you to think about that. If somebody's hungry and what they're willing to do for food, now let's, let's transfer that thought into being spiritual. Are we, are we not hungry for, for, for spiritual things? We just, we need it and, and we'll do anything to fulfill that need. Like Psalm 42, 1 says, As the heart or deer panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee. Now the psalmist there, he, he's, he's longing for God above all things. As a deer pants for the water, he's, he's panting his soul after him. It's very intense. Now this is a profound statement. A hungry man strives for food and a thirsty man for drink. Right? If you're hungry, you want food. If you're thirsty, you want to drink. If somebody's really, really hungry, you can't sing them a nice song to satisfy the need. If somebody comes to you dying of thirst and you paint them a beautiful picture, and it, I don't care how beautiful it is, and you give them, it's not going to fulfill his hunger or thirst. He needs food or he needs drink. So we have to hunger and thirst after righteousness. There's one object here. Much like a man that's hungry is going to be going after food, we spiritually must hunger and thirst after one object, and that's righteousness. Right. Now what I'm trying to say is the empty things of the world that we strive after so regularly aren't going to fulfill us. Much like a song or a painting isn't going to fulfill a guy who is hungry. You may think it will, and we, our brains tend to be uh, geared toward that, that if we could just make more money, or if we could be more popular, or if we had more things, or just the one thing that we can't get our minds off of, if we could just have it, we could be satisfied. And I'm here to tell you that you're not going to be. Because we got a hunger and thirst after what? Righteousness. Not the trinkets of the world. Look in the book of Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 55, verse 1 and 2 says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. We go back to Matthew 5, 6, and, and we see that blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's exactly what Isaiah is talking about. After righteousness in, in, in all ways. And this isn't just uh, an imputed righteousness we get of Jesus Christ. This is the, a very broad sense of the word and our behavior, the way we behave, the way we act. This is living toward, this is a very unattainable, perfect life. We're striving toward it. Though we cannot attain it in this life, but our desire is going to be to be right with God. Right? That's what we, as Christians, where our sole desire should be to be right with God. We must see sin the way God sees it. And the striving in the truth of the matter is we aren't perfectly righteous, and this is a cause for great distress. And why aren't we right with God? If there's parts of our lives that aren't, why wouldn't we be? And it's because of our sin. Our sin separates us from God. If we're living in sin, then it's going to be Impossible to be right with God. You can't have both. And that's where this hunger and this thirst for righteousness comes in. Where we can confess our sins. Because sin separates us from a God. Apart from Christ, we're separated from God. But we are justified and pardoned in Christ. Amen? So as we, as we live this life in the flesh, we know that we're justified. We're pardoned from our sins. We don't have to experience the punishment of it. 
Now, knowing that we're justified in part in this justified in part in man should desire in his conduct, his language, and his thoughts to be righteous. Knowing that we're justified, knowing that we're pardoned, it should affect the way we behave, the, fact, the way we live our life, our thought process, the way we talk, the way we think, and the way we behave should be affected by the fact to know that Jesus Christ came into the world to save us and deliver us and to pardon us. If we knew what the wrath was that was, on our, that was hanging over us and what we've been relieved of in Jesus Christ, it will affect us. It'll desire to be, our desire will be to be more like Him. In our whole life, every part of it. So not just on Sunday, not just when it's a church thing, but I'm talking all the time. There's a hunger to put on the new man, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. So what it says in Ephesians 4, 24. And so to illustrate this, you can think of a prisoner who's locked up for stealing or burglary or whatever the case may be. And that man is sorry, isn't he, that he's now locked up in prison. I mean, he should be. He may not be, but in this illustration, say he is. Right? But see, the man's sorry because he got caught. Right? He got caught. That's why he's sorry. You could let the man in prison, and then he's free, he's off his parole and all that stuff, and he's just going to go and steal again. He's going to go do the same thing and try to not get caught this time. Do you see that that man wasn't, he didn't have the chains and he didn't see his problem. He's just upset that he got caught. The pardoned sinner loses the desire to steal. And instead he wants to glorify God with his life. And so if we have a habit or something that's going on in our life, and then we, the reason we started it is because of our own selfish desire, right? Like you think of somebody who, who wants to maybe start smoking cigarettes. They don't do it because they like the taste of burning weeds in their mouth. They do it because they want to, they want to be accepted by their friends. Because it benefits them. It, it, it amplifies their image. It's a selfish desire why they started. And then when they turn 40 years old, they, they quit. Because the doctor says if you keep it up, you're going to develop cancer. So they quit because of that. Now, when they're 40, it's going to benefit them to quit. It's the same selfish heart that they're quitting that they're the reason why they started. The same thing like the man in prison. He's, he's now not wanting to steal because he doesn't want to go back to prison. is isn't because he's changed and his desire is to know that God says it's wrong to steal. And now I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to give and then I'm going to glorify God with my life. And so much like in our lives, we can get kind of down that same road as we just don't want to experience the consequence, but our heart doesn't change to do right for God and to glorify Him with our lives. Do you see the difference? We need to be hungering and thirsting after righteousness, not trying to avoid getting caught or whatever the case may be. Charles Spurgeon said this, always distinguish between seeking heaven and seeking God, between shunning hell and shunning sin. For any hypocrite will desire heaven and dread hell, but only the sincere hunger after righteousness. So there's a big difference in trying to avoid consequences and to hunger after righteousness, is what I'm trying to say. Hunger is the opposite of being content. Right? And we... Uh, what we need in the church is, is Christians and not simple professors who want to be as close to sin as possible, but not commit it. We need Christians that are seeking after righteousness, that are trying to please God with their lives, who, is, who are trying to be obedient to this book by the power of the Spirit that's in them. Instead of seeing, how close can I walk on the line of sin and still go to heaven? We don't need any of that. We have plenty of that going around. We need to surrender our lives unto the Lord and hunger and thirst after this righteousness. A lot of Christians, a lot of people will say, I'm just good where I'm at. Right? I got a ticket out of hell in Christ. That's it. That's all I need. And I'm telling you that they're cutting themselves very short because they've lost the hunger that Jesus Christ in the book of Matthew is talking about. The hungers also become complacent. 
We'll be talking a lot more about complacency and what that looks like coming up on uh, the Sunday morning service. But what I see today is a huge lack of hunger and thirst in Christians today. There's no hungering and there's no thirsting after righteousness. Now, as we sit in here as the Sunday school crowd, I don't ever want to have the mindset of somehow we're elevated above somebody else because of our hunger and thirst. Because I'm telling you right now that we could fall into the same activity. We could, we could do the very same thing. We are no better than, than anyone else. Because if we start thinking that way, then we're going to go way in the wrong direction and we're going to have just the biggest problem in lacking and, hunger, uh, and hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Because then we have pride in our way. Only Christ keeps us from this. Right? And so it's that righteousness of Jesus Christ that's imputed onto us that's going to keep us from being prideful because I go to Sunday school and you don't. I'm growing in my Christianity and you're not. No, we need to just keep focusing on our hungering and our thirsting after Jesus Christ. We need to be the example. We can fall into that same trap. We need to hunger for it. And, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. We cannot be content with our spiritual level that we are at today. We don't want to grow content. There's always more. God says that as long as we can continue to humble ourselves, we can be more like Him. And there's, I'm going to tell you right now, there's always more room to go down in humility. Amen? We can always go down. There's always room to be more like Christ. We can't be content with right where we're at. We must desire spiritual growth. That's the idea, is that Christian is to grow. Amen. And that's what we learn in here. And th there's all these things, and, and, we can, and we can compare it and look into this book like a mirror, and we can see where we're falling short. And we need to hunger and thirst after righteousness. And th that is what satisfies. Again, to emphasize that we need to hunger and thirst after what satisfies us. Spiritually. Like food. To a, hung to a hungry man. Excuse me. We are empty people, and we need filling. But what are, we, what are we lacking? What do we need filling with? And that's going to bring us to the next point of substance. So what, is this, what does this righteousness look like? It's easy to say, yeah, I want to hunger and thirst. I want to be righteous. I want that stuff. But, but what's like the meat and potatoes of that, so to speak? The meat and the drink. Now, when I think of hunger... And th I like, what I really like is a bologna sandwich. Yeah, yeah, amen. And now, that doesn't always, you know, it's, <laughs> that's like my wife making a bologna sandwich, you should see that. You know, but I love it, and I would eat one every day. And, and, but more, maybe if, you, maybe if that doesn't satisfy your hunger, think of like a steak. Yeah, yeah like, a, like a juicy t-bone or something or if you're a vegetarian maybe like a cucumber or something i don't know if that's you got a vegetarian in wyoming no, i don't think so there's i think that's illegal here isn't it <laughs> but anyway the, so what is that steak what is that bologna sandwich or whatever that well we have to think of it whatever's going to satisfy that hunger whatever food you like whatever you can it's really easy for us to think of what food we like I could, I could, and everyone would, with passion, say what their favorite food is or their favorite place to eat. But that substance needs to be righteousness. That's our substance. That's the steak. Righteousness. Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5 says, Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Righteousness. Matthew Henry says this, to have Christ made of God to us righteousness and to be made the righteousness of God in him, to have the whole man renewed in righteousness so as to become a new man and to bear the image of God, to have an interest in Christ and to, and to promise this is righteousness. This we must hunger and thirst after. That we can bear as people. We can bear the image of God in Christ. That's us today. We can do that. We can bear the image of Almighty God. 
through our faith in Jesus Christ, as we hunger and thirst after that righteousness, that's how we show people God is, is through our hunger and our thirst. But we need to have the right object. We need to uh, be seeking after the right thing. Amos, book of Amos 2.7 says that, Pant after the dust of the earth on the head of the poor, and turn aside the way of the meek, and a man and his father will go in unto the same maid and profane my holy name. Do you see that that person there is panting after the dust of the earth? Now that doesn't sound like a bologna sandwich to me. But the, the, it, the thing we have to see here is the, we're being blessed by hungering and thirsting. That's like a paradox, right? That doesn't make sense. If I can stand here and say that you're going to be blessed by hungering and thirsting, that doesn't make sense logically. Does it? Because why? Because hunger and thirst cause what? We were just talking about it. It causes pain. So how can we be blessed in that? And I want you guys to see this is because Jesus, see, he says that we're blessed through it. Are we blessed with righteousness or are we blessed by hungering for it? If you read this verse, it's blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. We're blessed in the process of that. Do you see that in there? And I don't know about you, but I, I read this, and when I, when I was studying for this, it took me a long time to really, to really start sinking in as I meditated on this passage. And this is a really profound thought. And so we can apply this because we look at it that everyone in, a, everyone in this room is different, in a different place in their life. Right? We got all, all sorts, all, everything going on in this, in this room. Many circumstances, many seasons of life life. Much trials of different sorts in here. And I don't know at all the ones. But there is blessedness to be had for every single one in here. In our hunger and thirst after righteousness. Now, so many people in, in one area, you can think um, the one, I'll just say a couple examples here to kind of try to get this point across it. Has anyone ever said that I'm a terrible, sinful person and I wish that I could be forgiven? I wish I could be made right with God. Or maybe a family member or a friend of yours isn't saved. We know that they're lost. And we long for their salvation and it's it can really hurt us. It's really hard, and this longing can be crippling to us if we really do love this person and, and we know their end. That's, that could be a longing. So our longing to be right with God, our longing for a loved one to be right with God. Or some people can say this, the Lord has been gracious to me, but my tendency is toward straying and sin. We know we're saved, but we keep going toward the same sin, and we keep straying, oh, if I could just be more perfect. If I could just be good enough. Have we ever thought like that? I know I have. But listen to me, here's the point of this, is that, that all of those scenarios are all blessed. Because there's longing there. There's longing and there's hunger and thirst after righteousness. And according to the Lord Jesus Christ, there's blessedness there. The struggle is very real in those things. When we consider our lives and who we are, Romans 7, 24 says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? That's the Apostle Paul saying that. But he was blessed. You see, we're blessed in the hunger and the thirst after righteousness. The yearning for righteousness makes us blessed. We're yearning for that this morning. Because if we are, you're blessed. And that's a promise right in here. We're blessed people today. And that's cause for joy. Now, one thing I don't see in here is the self-satisfied person. The one who's arrived spiritually. I don't see a blessedness in here for you. I don't see Jesus mentioning that at all, actually, in this text. 
the spiritually arrived perfect person is not in this book. <laughs> it's not in this passage. You're not blessed if that's where you are in your mind. So where does this substance come from? Where does this righteousness come from? Does it come from ourselves? No, it can't. There's no way. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also re re uh, reap. That's correct. Deception is thinking righteousness is from ourselves. That's going in the complete wrong direction. That's like in the book of Amos, that we hunger and thirst after the dust of the earth. When we start turning to ourselves, to think that righteousness sometime, somehow comes from ourselves. So if a man comes to you and he's really hungry, why don't you just tell the man that he really isn't hungry? Because I haven't eaten in 40 days. And you say, well, what you really need to satisfy the hunger is to uh, eat your own self. Right? Or um, he really just needs himself to satisfy the hunger. I'm really hungry. You say, well, you just, just, just look inward and you'll satisfy your hunger. That doesn't make sense. What, what's the guy need? What does a hungry man need? Food. He needs food. He needs an outside source. He needs uh, an outside source of food to enter into his body to get fulfilled. But can't, he can't eat himself to satisfy his hunger. That's a weird thought. But the same as our spiritual hunger and thirst, it's not going to be satisfied within ourselves, as many think. As we long for righteousness, we can't just try harder in our life to be good. We can't conform our external behavior and try to fit it into some form of religion to make righteousness happen. It comes from Jesus Christ, an outside source that dwells in our heart and comes from within. We must be saved from above with divine grace. Or we remain unrighteous. And what's so, in that pride of thinking we can save ourselves, this spiritual hunger is actually the remedy for that. And we see it in our example of our Lord. If we can read through these Gospels, you see that He's constantly hungering and thirsting after righteousness of the Father. Always seeking to do His will. And doing it perfectly. Jesus Christ, our example and our Lord, he longed for the redemption of his people, didn't he? That was his longing. That was what he was hungry for. And listen to me, he's still doing that today. Amen. And he's still seeking. He's still longing for people to come to him. That's why we're still here. The righteousness would reign in his death. That was his longing. And listen to me, this morning we are so blessed in here today. Even in our desperation, and even in our struggles, we're blessed. And we must grasp it, and I encourage you to grasp this truth this morning. That if we're sitting here in trouble, in struggles, things are getting to us and they're tearing us down and things are hard, we're blessed. God hadn't left us. He's blessing us. In our imperfection, we're blessed. Hungering and thirsting after righteousness, we're blessed. And again, the, the full ones, the ones that are already full, we're not, they're not here. We must long and we must hunger for satisfaction. And this is the best part, is the satisfaction part. Verse 6 again says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. What's it say there at the end? For they shall be filled. Blessed in hunger and thirst, and we're blessed in being filled. Amen? Amen. We're blessed in both. The, in fulfilling is found more hunger and thirst. When we're fulfilled, and we're, and like it says, for they shall be filled, what that's going to do is it's going to generate more hunger and thirst. There's another paradox. That doesn't make any sense. Logically. But if we can get on, if we can really understand what this means, spiritually, it makes perfect sense. This is that they shall be filled, and that generates more hunger. So the difference in hungering after being filled is the lack of bitterness involved. 
The filled man that hungers and thirsts after righteousness is most full. You catch that? The filled man that we've been filled hungers and thirsts after righteousness. That that hungers and thirsts after righteousness is most full. So we get involved in a really glorious cycle in our Christian life, in our spiritual life. Psalm 34, 8 through 11 says, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Our craving, our new craving becomes for heavenly things. And we're going to desire more and more of those heavenly things. It's going to be a lot less of us and a lot more of Him in our life as Christians. We're going to become satisfied in the perfect righteousness of God in our lives. Now listen to me, the world around us is in trouble. Those feeding the lust of their own flesh are striving after the wrong things. They're doing them, they're striving after the wrong things in all of the wrong places. But listen to me, God will not fail. The God of the Bible does not fail. Because perfect righteousness, and in that perfect righteousness, we're made full. Amen. Psalm 63, 1 says, O God, Thou art my God, early will I seek Thee. My soul thirsteth for Thee. My flesh longeth for Thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Psalm 23, 5 says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Amen. Is our cup running over this morning? Is our cup running over in righteousness as we hunger and thirst after righteousness? Christ's righteousness is far greater than our righteousness. The more we strive for, the, for that, the more satisfied we become. Now, this is a strange thought, and, and, I, can, and I can tell it, we just really have to think about it. The more we see of Him, the more we want of Him. The more we taste those things of God, the more we're, we're satisfied and we're in the presence of Almighty God, the more hunger and, the hunger and thirst it generates in us to want more. But at the same time, we're satisfied. Amen. And we can carry out the Beatitudes. We can be merciful. We can be pure in heart. We can be peacemakers. Because of that hunger and thirst, where sin abounds in the world, we see this all over the place. I'm sure we can look around even just Gillette alone and see plenty of sin. But listen to me, we hunger and thirst after righteousness, and we can, in that hunger and thirst, as we are doing that spiritually, what's going to happen is we're going to lead these lost people to the Savior. And that's our job as Christians. It's because we're hungering and thirsting, we're experiencing God, our cup is running over, and that's going to come out of us. And we're not going to have a choice, it's going to come out. Amen. And we can lead them to the Savior. Revelation twenty two seventeen says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that athirst, Come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. That's our message. Because we've all been hungry and thirsty. I'm telling you, those lost people that don't know the Lord are hungering and thirsting after righteousness themselves. We've got to lead them to where they can get it. Because what they're doing isn't going to satisfy them, and we know it. And we have the truth. So we do this, we invite him to come. Now, if you get somebody to come and you lead them to the Lord and they become saved and you can see the transformation in their life and you can disciple them and watch them grow, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to be satisfied with that one soul. If you can lead someone to the Savior, tell me that you're not hungry for more. You won't be satisfied with one. That's what I'm talking about. It generates more hunger. I want more of that. I want more of God in my life. The things in our life are being purged away because we're hungering and thirsting, and in that process, we're being blessed the whole time. And we have the victory in Christ, and there's no victory found anywhere else. To what or to whom this morning are we striving? 
What are we striving for? And a bigger question is to whom are we striving? And then our final satisfaction is in heaven. This is our ultimate satisfaction. This is where we're headed. Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8 says, I I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto them also that love His appearing. That's heaven. That's where we're headed. That's that's the satisfaction we're after. It says right there, the crown of righteousness. Revelation 21, 4 through 7 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things. I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Boy, let's get a grip on that text this morning. That should generate a hunger in you. Amen. Must first hunger and then thirst in order to be filled. Psalm 107, 9 says, For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. Be hungering and thirsting after righteousness today. And it says there at the end that you shall be filled. And whenever I see a shall, I can stand firm on that hope. It's not a maybe or a, it, it, a might or it could happen. No, it's a shall. Amen. So let that be our desire today. Righteousness. Wherever you're at. Our longing. And to know that we're blessed in that. And that we shall be filled. And ultimately, we'll, we'll be in glory and be filled completely. Let's pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you that you are in heaven and that you've gone to prepare a place for us and that you're coming again for us because your word says that if you went to prepare a place, then you'd come back for us. So, Lord, we do long for that day. But, Lord, as we're here on earth, help us to desire personal growth and change and righteousness that we can live under the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, be controlled by the Spirit. And by your grace, we can be more like Christ, that we could hunger and that we could thirst after righteousness and not uh, anything else, Lord. Help us to long and strive and seek for the right things. And by doing this, all in your grace, we thank you that you've sent us the power of the Spirit that we can discern that which we need to do in our lives. God, help us by your word to live obedient unto you as we hunger and thirst after righteousness. We do thank you that we can stand on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. God, just help us to be more like him and that we could be an example to those without. They can see you in us. That we can hunger and thirst after seeing souls saved and that our strivings become the things of you, Lord. We thank you for loving us. I pray for the Sunday morning hour here, Lord. Just pray that uh, your word can ring true in hearts. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.